All right, great. So good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Committee of a Whole. Uh, today is March 25th, and the members of the committee are uh, here with us. We have um, to my right, Councilman Hernandez, Councilwoman um, Billadou, Assistant Majority Leader uh, T.J. Clark, Majority Leader uh, Marilyn Rossetti, um, our Town Clerk, uh, Councilman John Gale, Councilman Josh Mitchum, and Councilman Alex Thomas. And so welcome to everyone. Then we also have joining us uh, our esteemed treasurer, uh, Carmen, I can't do just, just a minute of my department. Carmen Sear, just at a mental block. So again, welcome everyone. Um, so we have one item on the agenda this evening, and that item is uh, item 2.1. And this is a communication um, from Mayor Arum, Arulampam to deliver the annual report to the Court of Common Council on the state of the city of Hartford. In accordance with Chapter 5, uh, Section 2.I of the Hartford City Charter. This is the Mayor's first budget since taking office, fiscal year 2024, and we look forward uh, to hearing from the Mayor the progress he has made in the last three months and his initiative for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. Uh, so Mr. Mayor, we want to welcome you, and the floor is yours, sir. We'll shake, you can shake our hands. Shake everybody's hand, shake everybody's hand. Thank you so much. Council President Surgeon, members of the Court of Common Council, Treasurer Sierra, uh, to all of my colleagues here at City Hall, and to all of the residents across the city of Hartford. I come here tonight incredibly privileged and grateful for the opportunity to serve as your mayor for the past 80, 84 days and humbled by the awesome responsibility of leading the city we love for the four years ahead. I'm proud of what we've already accomplished in these short two and a half months here in the city of Hartford, and so incredibly excited for the progress we'll continue to make over the coming years together. My friends, the state of our city is strong because our people are strong, because we are resilient and determined, hopeful and connected. Because when we come together to fulfill the promise of this city and fight for our future, we grow even stronger. Today, I want to talk about the challenges that we face and the opportunities in front of us. About how building a more connected city will help us overcome these challenges and rise together. So let's start with our budget. Like every city in Connecticut and countless cities across this nation, we have some tough choices to face. The good news for Hartford is that our, in recent years, our bond rating has improved, and the state's Municipal Accountability Review Board has acknowledged our improved fiscal health by reducing our city's fiscal oversight from Tier 3 to Tier 2. But this year, with less federal funding coming in, with less in tax revenue and increased cost for employment, we've got tough choices to make. In this budget, we work to meet our challenges head on and keep our top priorities front and center by protecting renters and homeowners, by investing in violence prevention, by making sure our small businesses can grow, thrive, and create jobs, and by expanding our opportunities for young people. And we're going to do that without cutting city services or raising taxes or fees on our residents who are already facing increased costs. In the midst of financially challenging times, we're still making the investments in building a city that allows residents to thrive, businesses to grow, and families to build a strong foundation for the future. And that begins by bringing down the cost of housing, both by creating more affordable housing 
and by protecting renters from negligent landlords. That's why we created the city's first housing liaison and established, and established a problem landlords task force. We're bringing together housing officials to, with so, social services and law enforcement to identify the problems and create solutions to protect our residents. We're gonna work collaboratively with good landlords because if you're doing things the right way, if you're maintaining your property, if you're respecting renters, then you're adding to the fabric of our city and we wanna continue, we wanna make sure you continue investing here. But make no mistake about it, we will hold bad landlords accountable. So to the bad landlords, hiding behind a maze of corporate structure, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we are coming for you. Your days of exploiting hardworking residents by charging high rates for unsanitary and unsafe rentals are coming to an end. You know, during our housing week in February, we did a press conference in front of a blighted building. And there's a man from inside who, who saw me and came out and said, hey, do you work for the city? <laughs> and what do I have to do to do something about my landlord? And I told him, look, he, he couldn't get in touch with his landlord, not because he hadn't tried, but because that landlord was hiding behind three different corporate names and a maze of corporate bureaucracy. And the back of the parking lot had been fully iced over. There were heaps of trash and waste. There were abandoned cars out there. There was bed bugs in his, in his apartment. He wasn't asking for that much. He just wanted someone to listen. He needed somebody to help. I told him that every city official he needed to talk to was right there in front of him. And that we were actually already going after that landlord at that property and all of the 14 other properties he owned across the city of Hartford and that we were gonna keep fighting until problems like his were solved. So for him and to every other resident out there struggling with unsanitary conditions and rising rents, we hear you, we see you, we'll fight for you because you deserve better. Our neighborhoods deserve better and our city deserves better. Together, we'll make this a place where families can afford to live, stay, and thrive. But affordable homes and apartments get us only part of the way to stronger neighborhoods. We need to make our streets safer as well. That means working with our law enforcement and giving the, them the tools they need without expecting them to solve every problem. It means redoubling our efforts to get illegal guns off of our streets. Fifty-seven percent of the guns used in crimes in the city of Hartford come from out of state. And that's why in my first month in office, I joined the Mayors Against Illegal Guns to build the kind of collaboration necessary to reach across our state's borders and to stop the flow of illegal guns coming into our communities. Public safety means expanding community policing and creating safe spaces for our youth. It means showing compassion to those struggling with substance abuse disorders and mental health challenges by focusing on prevention, treatment, and recovery. It means helping citizens returning from incarceration to get jobs, to reacclimate into society so we can break the cycles of violence and poverty that so often beget more violence. Public safety means building a community that's resilient enough to meet the needs of our residents long before they're involved in an incident that requires somebody to call 911. That's why I'm proud to announce that we'll soon be launching the Hartford Office of Violence Prevention. Our office will increase coordination, collaboration, and communication between nonprofits, our police, and our schools. We know that under three-tenths of 1% of all residents of the population are responsible for the vast majority of homicides. And that means that our old tough on crime policies that locked up over a third of black men in communities like this have so clearly failed us. 
Our office will focus on getting smart on crime by identifying those who are most likely to become victims of perp or perpetrators and using all of our resources to interrupt cycles of violence to stop crimes before they happen. Our, that office won't solve all of our problems overnight, but it's a major step in helping coordinate a smart on crime approach that'll make our neighborhood safer. To strengthen our neighborhoods, we need to make them safer from crime, but stronger in other ways too. As a resident, I know that the small things don't often feel small when they prevent you from living your best life in beautiful and healthy spaces. And that's why we'll continue to focus on improving the quality of life for residents in our neighborhoods. As a dad, I want my kids to ride their bikes on city streets without seeing broken glass or a trash. I know that when a ratty old couch is sitting there on the curb for weeks, it hurts the character of our neighborhood. And I know there are few things more frustrating or disgusting than seeing trash and rats on our streets or ATVs riding through our neighborhoods. And I've heard from so many residents about the safety risks that comes with vehicles that refuse to obey our traffic laws. And that's why we're working under the new state guidelines to get approval to set up red light cameras in our city at the traffic intersections that have seen the most accidents. Because everyone deserves to feel safe on our streets and on our sidewalks. And we'll work to improve all of our city services so that every resident and every neighborhood can expect the very best service. And that includes getting snow plowed in every corner of this city. You know, when we had our last big snowstorm, I got calls from friends in neighboring towns who told me, you know what? The streets actually get better when you get into Hartford. And it filled me with so much pride, because I, <laughs> I remember snowstorms in which that wasn't the case, in which the opposite was the case. So I hope you'll all join me in thanking our Department of Public Works and every city official who worked extra shifts through long nights and early mornings to make sure we were able to get our kids to school on time and employees to work. And they also ensured that our businesses stayed open and that our new businesses could thrive in those crucial early days. Make no mistake about it, new businesses are opening all over Hartford, and we're working to make it easier than ever to do so. In early January, we created the Business One Stop. It's a new program that creates a one-stop shop for anyone who wants to start a new business. We created this to get residents from permit applications to ribbon cuttings as quickly as possible, because we want to make Hartford the easiest city in the state of Connecticut to do business and new businesses are sprouting up all over our city. Just this past week, I cut the ribbons on two coffee shops, a brewery, a recording studio, a movie studio, a photo studio, a salon, an outdoor gear company, a sewing company, and a nonprofit that focused on nutrition. I mean, I don't think I've gone seven days in this office without cutting a ribbon. You, many of you will remember when this council was sworn in Council President Surgeon talking about how we wanted to build more coffee shops in the city of Hartford. Yep. Since that time, just two months ago, we've had five new coffee shops open in the city of Hartford. And I'll tell you, those are some of the best moments I had because I know how much these new businesses matter to the owners, but to their new employees and the neighborhoods that they're in. These owners each take a major life risk in starting a new business, but they're doing it here in Hartford because they believe in our vision and they believe in where we're going as a city. And those business owners look a lot like the city of Hartford. They themselves reflect the rich tapestry of diversity that ma makes our city so strong and binds us together. And their successes aren't contained to any one neighborhood. In our connected city, a new coffee shop opening in my neighborhood means a job for someone in your neighborhood. That new restaurant in your neighborhood might be built by somebody in my neighborhood. That rec recording studio I talked about that opened this past week focuses on training our youth. And one day, one of those young people might just end up being Hartford's next rising star. 
We share in our successes. We rise together as a community. That's what it means to be connected. That's what it means to be a city that grows together. And our city is growing in so many new and exciting ways. But that growth needs to include our children. As you all well know, I'm a father of five young kids. And I know that my kids' schools are your kids' schools and that all of our kids are worth fighting for. Like school districts across our state, ours faces deficits as a result of federal funds that are drying up this year. Along with the con contending of the, with the ongoing impacts of Chef versus O'Neill. So we're gonna have to have tough conversations to set our priorities and make sure our students' needs are being met and to make sure our teachers get the support, respect, and gratitude that they deserve. In the days and years ahead, we need to work together with our state delegation to make sure our schools and places here like Hartford get all of the resources they need and deserve. But we also can't stop engaging children when the school day's over. And that's why we created the Department of Sports and Recreation in the city of Hartford. And why we'll continue to fight to make sure our school buildings stay open in the evenings and summers to keep kids engaged. It's an investment in our youth and an investment in our future. Now, as, as this council was debating our sports and recreation ordinance, I was reminded of why it's so important to fight for our future. At a time when it feels like people just can't get along, in the midst of all of the division in our world and in our politics, hope came to City Hall in the faces of six bright young kids, five girls and one boy who had heard about our effort. One of the girls, named Ella, organized her friends and they came into this very chamber and they advocated for a sports and recreation program in this city that would give them and their peers the same opportunities that kids in every other city and town expect and take for granted. <laughs> they made the case better than any of us could. And with their support and many of yours, we passed the Sports and Recreation Department for the City of Hartford. And as you might have guessed, those six kids are here with us tonight. Ella, Alexa, Ada, Charlotte, Maddie, and Eric, would you all please stand up for me and show us, show us why the future is in bright and capable hands? We are so proud of you. Now, I have to tell you, these kids didn't come here just to fight for themselves. They talked about their peers as well. In the midst of all of the ugliness of our politics, they made me reflect for a moment about the unbridled hope and optimism that led me to run for mayor. It's an optimism that I think all of us share in our hearts. It's an optimism that led each of us into a career in public service. Look, if these kids can work together to look out for another, one another, if they can engage in our democratic process like that, then we can too. Over these past few months, I've seen the challenges of this city. But everywhere I turn, I see seeds of hope in this city. I see neighbors shoveling out neighbors in the midst of snowstorms and our youth service corps wor working alongside them across streets in Hartford. I see advocates coming and fighting passionately for the things they believe in. I've gotten to be there when small businesses opened up bringing jobs and investments into our neighborhoods. I've seen people from the age of 10 
to the age of 70 get involved in the political process for the very first time because like me and you, they believe in Hartford. And so in this year ahead, I'm asking you to keep believing, to keep fighting, to keep reaching, to stay connected because Hartford, if we work together, if we fight together, there's nothing that we can't do. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless this city. All the parents finished taking pictures? Awesome. <laughs> Good job. Great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before I adjourn the meeting, I just want to remind everyone that we have an upcoming council meeting at 7 p.m. and right after the council meeting, um, the mayor has an open house right down at the function room. So um, please join us um, for the uh, mayor's um, reception in the function room. And um, that's right after our council meeting, which shouldn't be so long. We have a short council meeting this evening. So we finish at least by 7.20. Uh, I have a motion and the motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting. Second. Motion has been properly uh, and seconded. Do all those in favor of joining the meeting? Aye. Joining the meeting. Aye. Say hi. Yes. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you at 7.